So this is the morning of day four. I spent last night in Mount Laguna, which is a small mountain town just over here. Last night it started snowing. It was snowing the previous night up here as well. And uh, it's about 27 degrees when I got up this morning. The weather's awesome today though. I think it's gonna be clear skies for a while. Beginning in Southern California, the first 700 miles are considered the desert section of the Pacific Crest Trail. But it's not all desert. Every day on trail, there's a new landscape to walk through. That's Mount Whitney, isn't it? What's that? In the distance there? I think those are the Sierras. First 400 miles of the PCT have been really rewarding. There's been a lot of mountains, really diverse landscapes, a lot of awesome views. It's been cool to see everything so far. But I have a feeling we're about to get into the real desert. We're about to lose some elevation here. And pretty soon we're gonna be at about a couple thousand feet.
So, I'm here at Walker Pass Campground. I did 36 miles to get here yesterday. I might have enough food to make it to Kennedy Meadows with this resupply, um, but I've chosen not to. Um, having camped here last night, I think I'll try to get a ride into town and um, take a zero. Um, I've been kind of pushing myself a little bit harder trying to ramp up to the Sierras. I'm just tired. I've got a lot of pains in my legs and my feet. So I'm going to take a rest day. And there's no rush to get to Kennedy Meadows. The advantage for hikers who start this early in the season is that water is easier to find in the desert and temperatures are cooler. But as we get closer to Kennedy Meadows, everyone's mind is on the Sierras. What I've been told is that very few hikers have gone in yet. Everything is gonna be under snow and the real issue is some of the roads will be closed. So getting a resupply for more food will be difficult, which means really big food carries. Realistically, we might have to carry food for 10 to 12 days at a time. So I'm in Kennedy Meadows. I believe I've been here about four days now. It's hard to keep track. Everybody's just getting ready to go up into the Sierras. Everyone that hasn't left already anyway. Uh, a few smaller groups went in the last couple days. But one thing that's kind of discouraging is uh, there was a, a bigger group of strong hikers that went in, I want to say three or four days ago right after I got here and uh, they ended up bailing out before the first resupply point and I know that that was a group of strong hikers so it's kind of discouraging for this next section um, I'm still gonna give it a shot though this is definitely gonna be the most difficult part of the trail so far Our packs are loaded with new gear for the snow and an ungodly amount of food. We haven't got to the difficult part yet. We're still mostly below snow line. But wow, this place is beautiful. Fresh snowfall made our progress slow. We had to find our own way. Like the mountain should rise up here again on the left. Maybe.
weather was clear, the views were unbelievable. checked the weather forecast and found that there's quite a bit more snow expected. The group that I was hiking with didn't have enough time and they decided that hiking through the Sierras in these conditions right now was just going to take too long. So they ultimately decided to leave. My intention is to continue in the Sierras if I can. But this first stretch was only just the beginning. We have a long way to go. Right now, I'm sitting in a hotel room in Lone Pine, trying to decide what to do. I need to decide if I should go in alone or find another group, if I should wait for the storm or just go in. I gotta check out of this hotel room pretty soon here, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I found another group of hikers who were also waiting near Lone Pine. But up in the mountains, the storms didn't stop. We waited. After two weeks, conditions had improved and we were ready to go back in. Most of the high mountain passes that we will have to do on this trail will be on this next section from here to Mammoth. This will also be our longest food carry if we can make it all the way. But this is an important section because if we can make it to Mammoth, the hardest mountains will be behind us. The rest of the group is, I believe, at the Onion Valley Trailhead campground. Ready to start Kearsarge Pass tomorrow morning. Um, I am near the town of Independence. I was not able to get a ride, so now I'm road walking the way up there. It's gonna be a long walk, but I should still be able to make it before it gets too late, I think. There's just not enough traffic out here to get a ride, so I'm gonna walk it. five in our group. School bus from the Yukon, Crush from California, Shredder from Germany, Roadrunner from Alaska, and myself. It felt good to get back on trail. We've given the snow time to consolidate, making it much easier to walk on. How hard would you say this pass was? I've taken shits that was more difficult than that. <laughs> I've taken shits that was more painful than that. I'm taking shit's more difficult than that. By the time we got close to Muir Pass, the snow was soft, 
causing us to post hole all afternoon. Going into this, obviously we know the value of starting early for a pass when the snow is hard. And most of the time we've been doing that um, for most of the passes. Try to get up and over early shortly after sunrise or around that time. But today for Muir Pass, it just wasn't gonna work out mileage wise. So it's already late in the day and we're still not up top, which is okay. It just makes everything a lot harder because the snow is so soft. By that time we were rationing food and we were all exhausted. Even though it was one of the hardest days on trail, it was also one of the best. Yes. How hard was that pass? I have not taken any shits more difficult than that one. <laughs> That was the longest freaking <laughs> pass. Not the most dramatic, but holy shit. <laughs> and, I, and I could feel like myself like ready to pass out. So I was like, I think it was just heat exhaustion, which is ironic. Got it? Now I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> After nine days, we finally reached Mammoth. We filled our empty food bags and took a day of rest. When we got back on trail, we thought the hardest part of the Sierra was already behind us. But now we had to make our way through Yosemite National Park. The passes weren't high, but the rivers were. The winter's massive snowpack was melting, and each crossing was a new challenge.
Lumney Creek, and we just crossed the second to Lumney Bridge. Uh, thank God there's bridges here to cross this uh, creek, but even at that, the bridges are half underwater, so we're having to forge the, the creeks to get to the bridge and then forge the creeks after the bridge. a maze of river crossings out here. Now we got another rainstorm. Oh, well, you're on video. <laughs> You gotta slide now. No, I'm just gonna sit right on my butt and do it. How far have we walked? Oh, a thousand miles or so. We walked over a thousand miles, and soon we were near the end of the Sierra. South Lake Tahoe, we started to see less snow. Before long, the trail was mostly dry. The school bus and roadrunner fell behind. The rest of us stayed together. In Northern California, we started moving faster. The days were long. So I invented a new way of collecting water. You don't need to use any streams or lakes or rivers or springs, no groundwater. We don't rely on that. Fresh has agreed to help me film this video. This does require two people, so the one drawback is um, you have to have another hiker with you. <laughs> um, go ahead and take your pack off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him the empty bottle, okay? I'm gonna have you stand, you see like behind that big tree over there? Okay. I know it's weird, but you'll see why in a bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to his pack, I'm gonna reach down. You'll notice he has a full bottle right here. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna start to it away very quickly. But you'll see that now I have a full bottle of water.
spent a lot of time in this state, but it's now our last day in California. A lot of this state has been really beautiful and also really hard. But it's time to move on to Oregon. If we made it this far, we can make it all the way. Three other hikers joined our group. Karma, Seth Rogen, and Numbers. What are we about to do? Insane things. Like what? 24 hours, starting at 8 in the evening, or 7, 10 in the evening, sorry. Let's do it. So, doing the 24 hour challenge, uh, closing in on 50 miles since we started yesterday evening. So we kind of started a bit before sunset and then uh, hiked through the night, tried to stay awake and uh, been hiking all day today. So. Closing in on 60 miles for the day. Kind of a little bit bummed out because for a while I was thinking I might even be able to do 70 miles. But that's going to be a little bit out of reach now um, with the 24 hour challenge because we're running out of time here. There was some awesome trail magic back there a little bit. So we sat down for a little while. Made it to 60. About an hour and 15 minutes left. Yeah. So we did our 62 or 63. 
Now we're just looking for a flat camp spot. We still have, I think, like 40 minutes left on the clock, but it's getting pretty stormy. You can hear that. Soon we reached Bridge of the Gods. Crossing over the Columbia River, we walked into Washington. From Trout Lake, me and Crush decided to get a ride back to Cascade Locks to check out PCT days. It was cool to see people we had met all over the trail. After another couple days, we were back on trail, ready to try and catch up with the rest of our group. Joined by Sunkist. How would you describe today's hiking so far? It's been epic. Epic. I can't complain. We hiked into Go Rocks Wilderness. The scenery blew our minds. by the east side of Mount Rainier. Finally, at Snoqualmie Pass, we caught up with the rest of our group. Sunkist kept pushing while the rest of us decided to slow down and relax for the rest of Washington. have like 150 miles left of this hike I think. We're almost done and there's no better way to end a hike like this than in a place like this. Washington has just been unreal.
sun just went down and it is absolutely beautiful up here. Team, new plan. Start digging. <laughs> Your turn, crush. <laughs> and then laugh at it really hard. Laugh at your own joke. You can tune a banana. Wait, no. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Now laugh at it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> tune a banana, what the fuck? Like you never have to see us again. <laughs> Think of condensation right in the middle of your lens. Nice. 